In the 19th century, Karl Marx talked about alienation, which is a separation, uh, being a stranger to something. And uh, you're an alien to something. And Marx said there were four, aliena four alienations in his culture. One is alienated from nature. Well, at a conference dedicated to looking at the physical and the natural environment, we don't, I don't have to say much to you to show how alienated we are from nature when we're destroying nature itself. The second alienation is from other people. And that means we have less contact, we have less intimacy, we have less trust. We have less of a sense of relationship. And that, of course, as I've shown you, leads to increased propensity to illness, physical and mental. We are alienated from our work. A lot of people no longer do work that has any meaning to them. And that means that, and since human beings are productive creatures, we really are created in the image of God. We're meant to create. When we do work that's not creative, that doesn't reflect who we are, that imposes depression, anxiety, um, a sense of meaninglessness. And when we have a sense of meaninglessness, we'll want to substitute that sense of meaninglessness or that sense of meaning that we've lost by all kinds of other activities. And then we get all hung up on how we look or how people feel about us, what we can obtain, what we can possess, what successes we can achieve. In other words, all the false uh, substitutes which cannot possibly compensate us for the lack of genuine meaning. And of course, what this society does, it sells us a lot of products that substitute for that loss of meaning. In fact, much of the economy is based on a loss of meaning in our culture. Finally, and most importantly, we become alienated from ourselves. Well, let me ask you a question here, and I'm going to ask for a show of hands. How many of you had the following experience? That you had a powerful gut feeling about something, you didn't pay attention to it, and you were sorry afterwards? Please put your hand up if you have. Okay. I think the eyes have it. If I asked you the obverse question, as to how many people have had a powerful gut feeling, you ignored it, and you were glad about it afterwards, how many would not put your hand up? Well, I'm not sure. I'm seeing very few hands here. Well, that means to say, now, you know what you're telling me? You're telling me that at some point in your childhood, you got separated from yourself. Because no infant is born without gut feelings. Their to infants are totally connected to their gut feelings. Have you ever met a two-day-old who didn't know how to express their gut feelings? <laughs> and that means that in this culture, something very powerful happens to alienate you from your true self because the world couldn't stand who you really were. And your parents were too stressed themselves to honor and recognize who you really were. Just as a parent, I did that to my kids without meaning to. And then we become alienated from ourselves, we shut down our gut feelings, and our gut feelings are not luxuries, you know. They tell us what is right and what is wrong. They tell us what is dangerous and what is friendly. They tell us what is safe and what is dangerous. And they tell us what is true and what is false. So when we're alienated from our gut feelings, we have no longer have a sense of reality, no longer a sense of truth. Well, the good news is, the good news is, that human beings can regain their sense of connection to themselves, just as we can re regain our sense of connection to our nature. And um, empathy, which is a genuine human quality, is in us. We're actually wired for empathy. Even rats are wired for empathy. When you stress rats, rats in the laboratory by shocking their feet with electricity, they're more stressed watching other rats being shocked than when they're shocked themselves. Their stress hormone levels are higher. That's our nature as human beings. So contrary to the myth in our culture that we're separated individual, uh, aggressive, competitive creatures, we're actually wired for empathy, wired for connection, wired for love, wired for um, compassion. So really, to move forward, all we have to do, all we have to do, not an easy task, but it's certainly available to us, is to get back to our true nature. Thank you.